St. Louis Kahuku, the best rivalry in high school football in Hawaii, is back this year. Maybe they didn't, weren't sure what we were going to see it at the beginning of the year. You know, the Red Raiders started out. They tried some different things. They were trying to work on a passing game. We saw them, you know, going four wide and trying to work on throwing the ball a little bit. But they've gotten back to basics. Running the ball defense, win the Hawaii championship. Beat a Campbell squad that threw everything at him. You knew Darren Johnson was going to have those boys ready. You knew that they were going to throw the kitchen sink at him. They get past that game. So we start with the obvious question that everyone's going to want to ask going into this game. Is there any chance... Who can pull this off? Yes. Uh, in the press conference today, Sterling Carvalho said, rain. <laughs> the we weather, need, huh? We need rain. We need slippery footballs. And then, you know, he was joking, but only half joking, right? Yeah. They, you know. They can't play this game at uh, Wong Stadium? They can't just go over the big know, island? St. Louis, you know, I think Jaden DeLauer is so strong at this point. Um, he's a He's a weight room guy. Mm-hmm. He's a workout guy. He gets on the field constantly year-round. Year it doesn't matter if the ball's going to be waterlogged, slippery. You just grip it and rip it. So yeah, yeah. that's, to me, not a factor. Maybe catching the ball might be a factor. Mm. They run the ball only when, basically, they have to. And Coach Ron loves to run. Yeah. So he'll use the five, ball, the five wides. Yeah. And he'll let Jaden run. I mean, roll out, look, and run for first downs. And that's what they did two years ago with Chevin Cordero. Yeah. And Chevin was their leading rusher. This year, it's the same. They have other running backs. They got Kamalu, Kamaku Viole. Yeah. Sometimes it's Kuali Nishigaya back there, but... He's a Taliulu kid, I believe. Yeah, Taliulu got a beast last week. Yeah. They've had some fumbling issues certain times of the year, but nothing real bad. So they're happy just to spread the field. And that means Kahuku's going to have to decide, are we covering the fifth receiver with a linebacker or a DB? And if we go with a DB, and let's say uh, Delara decides to run, he's about 190 pounds. Yeah. And if a little guy comes up to try and take him down... He'll probably run him over. Yeah. I mean, not run him over all the time, but he's going to work his way to first down. That's, I mean, it's just a size-on-size size thing. So, yeah. Koku will probably stick with the linebacker. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. We featured Noe Kaneo, uh, cornerback for Koku in the Star Advertiser Tuesday's edition. If you didn't get to see it, Nick Abramo did a great job. Best Check corner out in the story. state, yes or no? Um, top three, top two. Easily top three. There's a couple kids on the other side. for Sailors He proves it. Good. Yeah, he proves yeah. it. It's so, not opinion. Right. So let me ask you this. So you've got a kid like him that's that talented, and you're trying to slow down St. Louis. St. Louis has a wealth of receivers, right? Roman yeah. Wilson's the speedster, the Michigan commit. You have Matt Sykes, the UCLA guy. You have Kuali Nishi guy, who's almost kind of been the maybe the breakout story of the season this year. He's had a lot of good things happening. The next Chad Owens, maybe. 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 We've talked about it, and, and all deserve. He's a great kid, and he's done a great job this year. So if you're Cuckoo, you have Noe Kaniho. What do you do with him? Are you going to try to stop or slow down one of those guys? Do you give him different looks? Do you let him bounce around and guard different guys? How are you going to use a weapon like that against such a, a wide-open, talented, deep St. Louis receiving squad? I think they're going to play a game of calculated risk, right? So if they line up in trips, the ball's on a certain side, the hash marks are really wide, they know this is probably coming, they're looking for this. So they play their, they play their cards, yeah. and they, they shuffle people to certain areas, right? And make sure Roman never gets a clear path downfield. Because Jaden, he, he's willing to just, oh, you're going to do that? He'll throw five bombs in a row to start a game. Yeah, yeah. It's not your typical run and shoot where, oh, they took him away, so we're going to do this. Yeah. No, they're not going to let you dictate. Yeah. But they're not going to be foolish either. Yeah. So if they're in zone, they shift over here, they do all this, he's going to look for his fourth or fifth option. Not there. Oh, okay. The chains. Yeah. And they're willing to. He threw for ninety nine yards last week, but he looked completely in control. Yeah, well, I was. That gonna, was so weird, but beautiful. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to bring that game up because earlier this year, as good as Jaden Delora was last year, I made the case that he might be the most improved player this year, and I said that after the Bishop yeah. Gorman game because that was a game where I said at the time, get this thing out to every college coach in the country and show him just this one yeah. game. And look, Ohio State has recently offered, I believe USC. So you know, some coaches have seen that, but. He, he just, his improvement has been so good this year. But last week, like you mentioned, less than 100 yards uh, passing against a good Milani defense. And he, and he finished with, I think, minus 14 rushing yards. Yeah, guys. yeah, he was a negative but rushing was com- Is that a concern? It was, com- it was complete nothingness. It doesn't mean anything. You watch the game, he's in control. Oh, yeah. we don't have it? Let's punt. Yeah. That's all. That's the difference between winning and just getting stats. Right. right. So, yeah, he's a winner. Yeah. Uh, well, Clearly. Yeah, we got to look at the trenches. We got to look at the trenches real quick because one guy I want to mention – is Zion Ayu, who, you know, he, he, he's he got the last name, but I just feel like he really hasn't kind of been given enough credit for how good he is. I think, I mean, he's an, a, a tremendous player. He's a guy that I think can make a difference. 
And we're picking holes with St. Louis, right? They're the sixth ranked team in the country. We could sit here and talk glowingly about them all day long, and rightfully so. But if we had to try to find some way that to pick some holes in them that Cuckoo can exploit, mm. is there any room there against that offensive line for a guy like Zion or you or a couple of these Cuckoo defenders to kind of get a pass rush on Jaden, or is he just too good to, to get this, out of that? This O line is so good. Yeah. And we don't know hardly anything about them. Yeah, um, isn't that kind of funny? That's how you want, right? That's if you don't know anything about an offensive line, doesn't that mean they're doing their job? I think big part of it is because Ron Lee is willing to run, mm-hmm. so he'll run a first down sometimes just to keep them honest. Mm-hmm. And they they beat excuse me they beat Coco twenty eight zero during the regular season, so they found ways to neutralize uh, any kind of push or penetration, right? So. Kahuku, they're not going to try and uh, reinvent the wheel, but if Zion lines up on the edge, a little bit at linebacker, just a different look every now and then, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. But they have good linebackers. They have good coverage. They have Zion inside two and a half sacks last week. I mean, he was just ripping through. He looked like Aaron Donald in a couple (laughs) plays. And he's also playing fullback as a lead blocker in a lot of their third and shorts. So uh, keeping him fresh, uh, keeping him... uh, Hydrated, uh, you know, you don't want to say it's one guy, but he's crucial. He is yeah. so crucial, and uh, I don't know. Does he have offers? Um, I don't believe so, and he's not in the Polynesian Bowl. You know, a little bit surprised there. I think there might be a couple additions late. I'm really they, they the can't they can't take everybody right. They at can't the same take everybody. Time. He's a guy that deserves to be in there along yeah. with some other guys that yeah. didn't get in, but him in particular as well. Yeah, so. it, with him, it's the metrics. It's the 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 vitals. He's yeah. not six two. Right. Six four, right. two ninety. Right. You know, neither was Aaron Donald or a lot of these guys who turned out to be pretty good NFL yeah. players. So yeah. we'll see. We'll yeah. see. I think he's gonna be the kind of guy to look forward to. So they have their they have their nose on him. They they're gonna be looking for him. They're not gonna let him dictate. It might be somebody else sliding through. That's true. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point. So yeah, it's once again, we're gonna do it again. St. Louis. We talked about the Lahaina Luna dynasty going for a fourth in a row. St. Louis going for their fourth in a row, trying to make their case as a top five team in the nation. Going to be an exciting way to finish the season. Prediction time. Put you on the spot. Okay, this is what I asked uh, Coach Sterling at the press conference. If the tight ends, Jesse Purcell and Lokana Enos, who also plays linebacker, if they get at least five catches combined, they might win. Because uh-huh. right now, at one point in the season, I looked up their numbers. We're about two-thirds of the way through. They had a combined one catch. Wow. They just block. Yeah. They're great blockers. Nobody's going to remember that they can catch the ball. Even St. Louis is going to be doing their thing. And eventually, if Tiger Rodolfo can find these guys for a first down here, first down there, that might change the momentum in the, in the first half, second half. We don't know. I mean, it's not a guarantee, but yeah. if they catch the ball and get 15 yards yeah. five times. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing they're going to have to do, right? It's not like they're going to suddenly come out and have these big plays on offense. But yeah. those third downs, right, those third yeah. and eights, third and sevens, where you're not going to be able to just kind of pound in and get a first down. It yeah. seems like those are going to be the key plays where if they can get – some first downs, yeah. run the clock, move the chains, keep that St. Louis offense off the field, and that's yeah. pretty much the formula. And if, and if Nick Herbig ends up in coverage, then it's on Tiger Rodolfo to run for the chains. You know? And he's a, he's a talented sophomore. He's still not a big guy who can take five hits yeah. in a row. Yeah. You know? But he, he's been smart this year, but he's going to have to use his legs. I mean, St. Louis is so fast, man. It's ridiculous. Oh, they've been a joy to watch. Maybe the fastest defense we've ever had. Interesting. And maybe, yeah, not, maybe not the best. Maybe the best. We don't know. But yeah. definitely the fastest I've seen. And I know this. If they win this game after the game, we get to go ask Cal one of the most annoying questions he gets every year. How does this team stack up to all your other oh, teams? You know? It's probably maybe his least favorite question. You know, I asked him that the other day and, you know, after the game. And he said, you know what, let's maybe, but let's see. Let's see. We've got we to do this first. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Levi Brown also. Levi Brown too, yeah. He pick six last week. Yeah. Oh, He's just, ready. He's so ready. talented. So they'll talented. Be, they'll, Tiger will probably see him and go, okay, i got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we're going to finish it. St. Louis and Kuku to end the prep season. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? Who you got? I'm making a prediction. You know, <laughs> I try to stay out of the prediction game, but look, I've and I've actually probably got this wrong a few times before. I remember we write when, these things down before games all the time. Well, remember, what was it, four years ago now when Kuku just smoked St. Louis? Yes, I thought St. Louis. 14. Right. Then I thought Kuku was going to win again the next year. St. Louis comes yeah. back with Tua. So... Don't take this for any, you know, anything at all. But I just think the same, they're just St. Louis, man. They're just too deep. They're too good. They got, you know, too many weapons on both sides of the yeah. ball. Um, could it be a little closer, maybe? But I'm thinking like 31 to six. Well, okay. Yeah. Now I can see that happening if Kahuku can keep their penalties down. Yeah. Uh, if they keep it under 50 yards, I'd be shocked. 
because uh, there's so physical stuff happens. But if they can keep it under 100, I'm thinking St. Louis can eke it out. It'll just they're not gonna play crazy. Yeah. yeah. Ronnie will be like, I don't care if it's a close game. We're gonna do the percentage thing here. Yeah. So I'm thinking 27, 20, 20, maybe 27, 19. Yeah. And just real quick, I want to appeal to the Cougar community. It's awesome when you guys are there. You make prep football amazing with the way you guys come out, your spirit, the way you support your team. There's been a little bit of talk about not necessarily as many Kahuku fans that have called these last games. Even though it's St. Louis and it's going to be a tough thing, we hope to see you guys out there because you guys are awesome. You make it a great atmosphere. You make it a joy for us to cover the game. So hopefully there's a big crowd out there uh, Friday night. That's it. We're almost there. We'll yes. see you guys Friday at Law Stadium. Paul Honda. The Prince of Preps, thank you for doing this. Oh, crusher. Enjoy the game. Enjoy our coverage. We've got a spread coming out on Friday's paper, four pages. Enjoy that. We'll see you at the stadium. Take care.